Hello, my name is Bilal Sukkar. In this uh, video, I'm going to cover macro maturity components or macro adoption model V. This uh, model is part of five uh, interconnected models which cover macro adoption. If you'd like uh, to watch an overview of all five models, please refer to the introduction video by following the video link at the bottom right. This research uh, covering macro adoption is done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Mohammed Qasim of uh, Teesside University. The macro maturity components model uh, measures the BIM maturity across markets. It does that uh, by identifying eight macro maturity components and mapping them against the five maturity levels. Let's look at uh, these uh, eight uh, components and five maturity levels. The first uh, component is objective stages and milestones. So in this component uh, we use to identify whether a country or a market has clear uh, BIM objectives, uh, clear BIM stages and milestones. And uh, I'll explain this in a bit more uh, further down in this presentation. The second component is champions and champions and drivers, and this component identifies whether there are champions and drivers within a market uh, driving uh, the BIM adoption. The third component is uh, checks whether there is uh, available a regulatory framework. Uh, there are contractual uh, clauses. There are new types of um, contracts covering digital workflows, whether there are integrated insurance and things like that. The fourth uh, component is availability and the extent, uh, extent and uh, the variety of noteworthy publications, whether they are guides, uh, protocols, or mandates. The fifth is learning and education, and this component uh, is used to identify whether a, a market has a, a BIM educational framework, has BIM learning material, and things like that. The sixth is uh, measurements and benchmarks that identify whether the market has um, metrics to measure the capability of organizations, uh, competency of individuals, and performance of uh, projects. The seventh is standardized parts and deliverables, and this identifies uh, whether a market has a standardized objects, uh, component libraries, uh, for, you know, for manufactured items, for structural elements, architectural elements, etc. The last and eighth component is the technology infrastructure component, which is more valid for developing countries than it is for developed countries. But overall, it identifies the availability, affordability of software, hardware, and availability, and the extent of network-based solutions that will enable higher capability BIM workflows. So these were the eight components. Let's look now at the five maturity levels. Uh, we've got uh, mat first maturity levels A, ad hoc or low maturity. B is defined uh, or medium low uh, maturity. C is integrated. So C is sorry, managed or medium maturity. D is integrated and E is optimized. This uh, maturity index has been covered in a previous video. Please uh, follow the maturity index uh, video link at the bottom right to have a, a more detailed uh, look into the meaning of each of these uh, levels and how they can be applied both at the uh, macro and at the uh, micro levels. Now these uh, five maturity levels are represented by these circles. So at the outer circle we've got uh, ad hoc, uh, then we've got to be defined, C managed, D integrated, and E optimized. And the way uh, this um, model uh, is Develop illustrated is that optimize is at the center. So meaning uh, you start from the from from the this uh, circle at the, the largest circle is ad hoc, and as you move down, you go to optimize. And the reason why it's designed this way is that uh, as uh, things mature across all eight uh, components, uh, they will eventually reach a point where they are integrated and optimized. Optimized, and this is called uh, a singularity point. So you can see here objectives, uh, milestones, uh, and stages. Here, you know, champions and drivers, all of them will have five uh, maturity levels that can be assessed. Uh, 
And to give you an example how these uh, you know, assessments are made, each one of these components will include uh, includes lots of uh, metrics. So for example, one of the metrics shown here is whether there are uh, a market scale BIM objectives. So you see here at A, although maturity, uh, A indicates that there are no market scale BIM objectives, while B, medium low maturity, that there are well-defined macro objectives. At C, it tells you that uh, BIM objective stages and milestones are centrally managed. So the, the, this is really about uh, these things are being managed by some kind of authority or task force. D is integrated and E is optimized. Let's look at another component, uh, for example, learning and education. And one, one of the metrics used here, whether uh, there are available you know, learning topics. So at A, say, it says here that the BIM learning topics are neither identified nor included within legacy education training programs. While, while at B, BIM learning topics are identified and introduced. C, learning topics are mapped to current and emergent roles and D, uh, learning topics are integrated into education tiers, and EBM learning topics are infused. They, they, they disappear, actually, because uh, at very high maturity, uh, the BIM term no longer exists, and it's uh, just infused within uh, digital workflows and all other uh, disciplinary topics. If you look at uh, another uh, component, uh, standardized parts and deliverables at low maturity, we find that uh, there are no market-specific uh, uh, object libraries like those windows, etc., at uh, medium uh, maturity, standardized object libraries are available and used, uh, and at integrated standardized object libraries, service delivery model uses, because model uses are uh, also considered to be standardized uh, deliverables, are integrated into procurement project workflows and life cycle uh, facility operations. So these uh, eight uh, components and five maturity uh, levels uh, indicate, you know, once, you know, once measured, the, the, the level of maturity within a market uh, and uh, how uh, well-defined these uh, requirements are, whether they are managed, centrally managed, whether they're integrated with each other, and whether they're continuously optimized. These uh, uh, eight objectives can be used in multiple ways. One of the ways they can be used, of course, is an, an assessment. So here we've got four sample markets. Uh, the, this is the, uh, the top right is the lowest maturity market where all topics nearly are at ad hoc, only four of them, five of them are at define. While we look at the bottom left um, sample chart here, you see that uh, um, most uh, or all topics are at least at defined level. Some of them are at managed and three of them are in integrated. There are other ways of using these uh, um, eight components. Uh, for example, if we replace the maturity index with time, uh, meaning uh, we are using these eight uh, components here on the uh, left column. And uh, we are mapping them against uh, some kind of milestone of, or objective. Um, so for example, you can say that objective stages and milestones, uh, say a, a market would like to, to develop a BIM strategy, they can use these eight uh, components and say, I want to establish basic stage objectives by 2017. By 2018, I want to define minimum capability requirements for certain types of projects and then other minimum capability requirements for other types of projects. For champions and drivers, establish a high-level task group, for example, by a certain date, et cetera, et cetera. So these really eight uh, uh, components can be used to develop a market-wide uh, strategy. Thank you. If you'd like uh, to learn more about uh, macro adoption models, please refer to macro BIM adoption conceptual structures by following uh, this link here. And also, please subscribe to the um, YouTube channel.